investors applying for plants to produce 50% of their demand just out of solar and wind uh, resources of Egypt. So this is quite encouraging. Mm. And the government only a few days ago have announced that they've gone through all 177 uh, applications that were presented to them and they have selected or qualified, if you like, um, about 67 out of those. Mm. And um, this is really very positive mm. because it means that there will be very quick deployment, which is again one of the advantages of going uh, clean, uh, be it solar or be it wind, is this very quick deployment. If you, if you want to build a plant that generates electricity based on burning coal, or burning natural gas, then you need perhaps two and a half years mm. to build the plant. From the word go until you get electricity, you take two and a half years. If you do it using, if you produce electricity using um, the uh, uh, solar resource, you could do it within six months. Mm -hmm. So it's very fast deployment, which is an added advantage. It's not only clean electricity, but it's also very quick to deploy, mm. which is really super suitable for us because we have, we are currently suffering mm. from um, a gap between supply and demand. Mm. Mm. So, I mean, things are progressing positively. I wish they, the government would have been faster mm. than they, they actually are. Um, I wish the government um, hasn't gone for the decision to burn coal to generate electricity but at least there are positive aspects. Mm -hmm. uh, sir, what are your expectations for solving the, the energy crisis in the coming uh, few months? Do you believe that we, we could, by all what you have just mentioned, uh, now uh, with using different methods of solving the crisis, we could actually uh, come to a, a real solution for the crisis within uh, the coming months? Um, well, I hope so. <laughs> I'm not so sure. But, but, but you have said that happen. the, the problem happen. did happen a decade ago, and up to this moment we did not find the right solution. So we believe that this could happen now. Yeah, um, I, be, I believe it's, it's not a question for me to answer, but I am hopeful. I'm mm -hmm. hopeful that uh, we shall not have as many brownouts summer 2015 as we did in summer 2014. Mm -hmm. We will not suffer. Mm -hmm. um, um, as severely as we did suffer last summer. Mm -hmm. um, whether um, there, there's going to be zero brownout and there's going to be electricity for everybody or not, I cannot <laughs> answer this question. If you ask me if it's feasible to have zero brownouts summer 2015, the answer is definitely yes, we can. Because of we that can. quick deployment of mm -hmm. uh, plants using the uh, energy from the sun. Very, very quick deployment. But does that need a lot of, uh, of huge amount of funding which could not be uh, available uh, for the government, for example? It's not a question of funding or because or it's going to be 100% funded by private money, private mm. investors. So the government doesn't have to worry about having sufficient resources mm. to finance plans. So we can find the solution without spending money from the government? Yeah. That, that's I'm the whole idea. Yeah, but I, what I don't Paris understand because it's idea. also a bit um, fearful because when you speak of um, uh, investors who are coming from abroad to, uh, you know, invest in this mega project that would be eventually appear to plan beneficial for millions of people. Yet, when the government says that it's going to be uh, buying this product off them, it will trigger a lot of question marks in people's head on how much will I be buying it for? At the end of the day, you want to solve a crisis that would be useful for people in affordable concentration, a country that suffers of over 50% of poverty. Yeah, and let me assure you. It's, 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 it's a, a very difficult equation. Yes, it's mm. a very valid concern that you just expressed, but let me um, assure you that there's nothing to worry about. Mm. Because when you talk to people in the, um, in the government and ask them, could you please tell us how much does it cost you, the mm. government, to produce a unit of electricity. Mm. For a decade, they always insisted that it cost something of the order of 35, 36 mm. piastres. Everybody knew this was not true. This was not a complete answer. Mm. And all of a sudden, 
um, about a year ago, the government decided to mm. announce the real cost that they have to undergo to produce a unit of electricity. Okay. And it was, surprise, surprise, 140 pesos. Oh, my God. Okay. <laughs> And I'm now, sorry, Donald, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Let that me, it depends on areas. Me, the areas me. also differ. In, in the fifth settlement, we pay a lot for electricity. Yeah, we, Not now we, the fifth we're talking we about how much does it cost the government to produce mm. a unit of electricity, mm. which means all the costs that the government spends divided by the number of mm. units mm. of electricity generated, and that gives you the average production cost, mm. of, cost of electricity. Now. Once they have declared that this is of the order of 140 piastres, mm -hmm. that is really very, very comforting because the feed-in tariff means the government commits to buying that same unit of electricity out of private investors mm. at one pound. Mm. So the government will be actually saving money mm. in allowing the private sector to start to build solar plants that generate electricity and wind mm. plants that generate electricity because instead of the government having to pay 140 pesos to produce a unit of electricity, they just buy it off the private sector for one pound. Mm. So they're actually saving money so and Dr. solving Ram, the crisis. Yes, Dr. Ram, you mean here that the, the cost of the electricity would be less for the government if they, uh, they take it from the private sector? Yes. Uh, and to what extent that could be reflected positively on the um, client, on the, the, on the, 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 the user, the, the people, user, yeah. yeah. Uh, the user uh, is the a bit pricing, out no of this of, uh, picture. Cuts. Yeah, oh. the, the, the buyer of electricity, you and I, and uh, yeah. you know the it's factories it's and, mm -hmm. and everybody who uses electricity yeah. in Egypt and of course has to pay the bill at the end of the month. Now, all those consumers or buyers of electricity are a little bit outside of that picture within mm. painting mm. because as, as you know um, during last year uh, the government has announced very clearly mm. that all the subsidies to the price of electricity mm -hmm. that the government is adding mm -hmm. for the buyer will be removed over five years mm. so over a five year period every year in the yeah, pricing you see an escalation Removing the subsidies. Mm. I need to talk about something also because I like. I mean, I, it always triggers me when we speak of uh, electricity or uh, mm. what what is your right as the government, what is my right as uh, as a customer or an citizen. Egyptian citizen. Um, the fact that a lot of people are stealing electricity, the fact that people are not consuming electricity properly. I'm not talking in indoor homes. I'm talking about the streets, the huge malls. Forget about all that. Let's talk about the millions of people living in slums mm -hmm. who are actually stealing electricity in front of everybody's eyes mm -hmm. and water and they're not paying for it. I mean, you mm -hmm. can't just like take a wire and then stick it somewhere Many and, people are and decide to, 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 to open a cafe in the middle of the dark mm -hmm. and... Sir, I even uh, watch what is people this? selling stuff uh, on the Fifth of October Bridge, on the, uh, standing in the corniche. They're stealing off and the they lights, are, and uh, it's they are stealing the lights. Pretty cool. They have music, yeah. <laughs> and they have colored lights, and it's like I'm here. I'm they stealing. Have, uh, Show me what you can do. From the, the it's yeah, annoying. The light Millions light of people board, are living yeah. in slums. I mean, I don't understand if they can live on a land that is not paid for or does not belong to them. You could imagine what they're doing with electricity, and 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 and, and there's wires everywhere. <laughs> I mean, I've been to slums for my coverage for many things, and there's like wires everywhere. I don't know where it's coming from, mm. where it's going. It's yeah. just. Mm. Uh, what's going to be done about that? You can't make, I'm, I mean, I understand that in an area where I live, I need to pay, but yeah. I can't find it right and fair as an equal Egyptian citizen who have rights at the end in this land for me to pay extra stuff because of my where I'm categorized in society and other people are taking it for free. Yeah, yeah, of course. I, I fully understand <laughs> what you're saying. Um, and let me tell you that, you know, perhaps it's going to be a good surprise that um, developing the resources that Egypt has in terms of sun and wind, which are humongous, as we said mm -hmm. at right at the beginning, actually part and parcel of solving that problem you just mentioned. Mm -hmm. Because if you ask, if we ask ourselves, 
<laughs> why are people living in slums? It's not out of their choice. It's because of other problems, mm. other social problems that have accumulated over the, the last few decades. So if you really, mm. as a government, decide to develop our very rich solar resources, mm. not only to cater for electricity demand in Egypt, mm. but also to export clean electricity, Absolutely. then mm. you, you are forming a national project that will need people who live in the slum areas to really move <coughs> into the areas where we can build huge power plants that will turn mm. the, the solar energy into electricity yes. for local and for export, and that will solve the problems of the slums. You will no longer have slums. Yes. You will have people who would have proper employment, you would have proper development of Egyptian resources, you would earn soft power by mm -hmm. exporting electricity. Because if you export electricity to a country, then that gives you soft yeah. power on that country. Well, on the soulful so note, uh, a let's thousand, a yeah. thousand benefits can be Absolutely. made if we decide to properly develop our clean resources and that uh -huh. will save us from burning coal, making more Absolutely. pollution and so on. Mr. Amr uh, Mohsen, energy expert, thank you very much thank you. for joining us on the breakfast show. And thank you very um, much, Dr. Ram. Mm -hmm. And we have a short uh, report, uh, we have a report rather by Dina Yunus and we'll come back uh, after that to resume our breakfast show. Let's stay tuned.